What is fiberglass and how is it made? Hey engineering lovers, have you ever stopped to think about how seemingly fragile materials, like glass, can be transformed into super strong structures capable of reinforcing cars, boats, and even wind turbines? Behind this paradox is fiberglass, one of the most versatile materials in modern industry. But what exactly defines this composite and what chemical and physical processes make its manufacturing possible? But first, what is fiberglass? Fiberglass, technically called glass fiber reinforced polymer or glass fiber reinforced polymer, is a composite material. It is made up of two essential parts, glass fibers, which are the reinforcement, and a polymer resin, which is the matrix. The fibers, with diameters ranging from 5 to 25 micrometers, thinner than a strand of hair, provide mechanical strength and rigidity. The resin, usually polyester, epoxy or vinyl ester, acts like a glue, distributing loads and protecting the fibers. But how did fiberglass start? The idea of reinforcing materials with fibers isn't new. In the 18th century, the French experimented with glass threads in fabrics, but industrial technology only took off in the 1930s, driven by the Owens Corning Fiberglass Corporation. The company developed a viable method to produce continuous fibers on a large scale, originally for thermal insulation. The crucial breakthrough came with the understanding that the orientation of the fibers within the resin could mechanical properties, a principle that is still central today. And how is fiberglass produced? The process involves two main steps, the manufacturing of the fibers and the shaping of the composite. In the manufacturing of glass fibers, the basic raw material is silica, which is obtained from quartz sand. To reduce the melting point and adjust properties, minerals such as limestone, which decomposes into calcium oxide, alumina for chemical resistance, and boron oxide, which lowers the viscosity of the molten glass, are added. The mixture is melted in furnaces at approximately 1400 degrees Celsius, forming liquid glass. This material then passes through bushings, which are platinum plates with micro holes. Under mechanical tension, the glass flows through the holes, forming continuous filaments which are quickly cooled with water. A critical fact is that the drawing speed can reach up to 3000 meters per minute. And the abrupt cooling prevents crystallization, maintaining the amorphous structure of the glass. Before winding, the fibers receive a coating or sizing based on silanes. This treatment promotes adhesion to the subsequent resin and protects against abrasion. In the shaping of the composite, the fibers in the form of roving, fabric or mat are combined with the resin. A common method is hand layup and it works like this. A mold is coated with a release agent and then a layer of what we call gel coat or pigmented resin for finishing is applied over it. The fibers are then manually arranged and impregnated with resin, which is catalyzed with methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, which starts the curing process. And the curing occurs through thermoactivated polymerization, forming rigid three-dimensional networks. The exothermic reaction releases heat between 100 and 150 degrees Celsius. And its kinetics follow the Arrhenius model, as shown in the formula on the screen, where K is the reaction constant, AE is the pre-exponential factor, EA is the activation energy, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Automated processes, such as poltrusion for profiles and filament winding for cylindrical tanks, use control tension to align the fibers and maximize directional strength. Now, why is fiberglass so strong? The answer lies in the synergy between the components. The fibers with stable SiOSI bonds or siloxane bridges withstand tensile loads. Their strength increases as the fiber diameter decreases due to the reduction of surface defects. 
and the resin transfers stresses between the fibers and resists compression. The fiber resin interface, strengthened by silan, prevents delamination or debonding. Microscopically, when a load is applied, cracks propagate through the resin but are deflected by the fibers, a mechanism called crack bridge, dissipating energy. And where are glass fibers used? Their uses are quite varied, being used in bus bodies, fuel tanks and boat propellers. That's because the lightness of the material reduces energy consumption. They can also be used in wind turbine blades, anti-corrosive pipes for water and chemicals, and even in surfboards and fishing rods. Measurable data explains its preference, since it has a density of about 2 grams per cubic centimeter, but with a specific strength, which is strength divided by density. 10 times stronger than carbon steel and has built-in electrical insulation. And how does fiberglass compare to other materials? Well, fiberglass occupies a unique niche among structural materials. Balancing properties that metals and other composites don't indirectly replicate. Compared to carbon steel, it offers a quarter of the density of steel. In addition to absolute corrosion resistance, eliminating the need for painting or galvanizing required in marine or chemical environments. However, its modulus of elasticity is five times lower than that of steel, limiting its use in applications where extreme rigidity is critical, such as in beams with very large spans. Compared to aluminum, it maintains an anti-corrosive advantage and costs 30% less per unit volume, but it loses in thermal and electrical conductivity, making it unfeasible for heat exchangers or electrical components. Carbon fiber, in turn, surpasses fiberglass in specific strength. But it wins in terms of cost, since carbon fiber currently costs about $15 to $150 per kilo, while fiberglass costs from $1 to $5 per kilo. Specifically, in applications like wind turbines, fiberglass dominates due to its cost-strength balance, where it can withstand cyclic loads equivalent to 80% of carbon fiber, but at only 20% of the price. Meanwhile, in chemical tanks, its resistance to acids surpasses even metal alloys like stainless steel. I, for example, am working on a project for a chemical plant that produces nickel and cobalt. Sulfuric acid is used at several stages of the process. And since the composition of the chemical solutions is extremely acidic, a large part of the piping, tanks, and even the lining of the containment basins are made with fiberglass due to its low cost and resistance to corrosion. The persistent disadvantage is in recycling because unlike composite metals, resin requires complex thermal processes for separation, recovering only 50 to 70% of the fiberglass. It synthesizes centuries of knowledge in material science from the controlled melting of silica to interface engineering. Its secret is not only in the raw material, but in the microscopic engineering that transforms fragility into robustness. As we advance in sustainable resins and efficient recycling, this material continues to evolve. Now, not just as a tool, an industrial tool, but as part of a circular economy. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, take the opportunity to subscribe if you haven't already, leave your like and activate the notification bell. So, what do you think? Had you ever imagined how much chemistry and physics are involved in that speedboat or that wind turbine blade? What other fiberglass materials do you know? Leave them here in the comments because I want to know. Right here on the side, there are two interesting video options that you need to watch to expand your knowledge and explore your curiosity. And if you want to support us, just leave your like, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and consider becoming a channel member. That's it, engineering lovers, a big hug, and I'll see you in the next video.